I'm talking to you today about insurance for an ambulance, a van, a bus type RV conversion. It's a minefield of requirements if you're repurposing your vehicle for camping or living it in it full time. Even before we finished our build, my wife wisely got AAA insurance. That's British Columbia Automobile Association here in Vancouver. She got it for our ambulance as an RV. It was a cheap 20 bucks a year to include it with our other vehicles. And I didn't think much about it at the time, but well, let me tell you, our first outing in the ambulance had no heat and only a bed. It broke down at a gas station about 80 miles from home base. We called the auto club and they sent some guy with a flat deck to tow it to a garage within a mile of our breakdown. After calling three garages, I was told it was a three week wait just to get into their garage. Well, we called back our AAA and insisted we could help from Vancouver. They finally agreed after Joanne got on the phone and they sent another flat deck the 80 miles to pick up our Ambo and take it to our local garage, which is just down the street here. While we're waiting the, the four hours, a friendly tow truck driver, seeing our dilemma, he, he pulled up and offered to tow us home for a flat 500 bucks. Really? <sighs> Sorry, but we'll wait. As an aside, my good buddy also owns an ambulance, uh, and he recently broke down with uh, without AAA coverage, and he had to pay 300 bucks to have his Ambo towed to his house around 20 miles. A lesson well driven into our psyche for sure. Um, when the build was complete, it's never really complete. <laughs> Ask anybody. I called my insurance agent in Vancouver to see what the cost to convert it to an RV coverage would be. Amazingly, he said it was cheaper and it took my coverage for a Ford 2013 E350 Super Duty van valued at 15 grand around that to an RV with an agreed upon value of 90,000. So it is easy to is it easy to transfer the coverage? Well, yes and no. The ambulance, according to the BC Insurance Corporation, that's the government agency that manages our insurance here, said we needed to have certain things installed in the ambulance to be considered an RV. We needed three of the following, a bed, a stove, a fridge, heat, a toilet, or an installed sink or water supply. We had four of the six, so we were covered, right? Then we needed to go to a commercial vehicle inspection um, garage, licensed garage, and it had to be we had to be inspected by a mechanic, a licensed mechanic. This was a three hundred dollar bill up front, but we're happy to pay. I mean, so the mechanics were thorough, and besides finding some issues with our engine injectors, body engine parts, they told us we needed a new license plate light in the rear and a new foot pad for the brake pedal. Really? Well, at least we know that the Ambo is safe and reliable. The final cost? 3000 bucks. Yeah. Are we done yet? Not really. Now, we had to take it to a commercial weigh station to make sure it was not over the road rated weight of six tons. We passed, but we had a few scary moments pulling up to all those 18 whalers and and facing those uh, peace officer inspectors. They're serious dudes. Then we had to take the paperwork to our insurance agent who was responsible for ensuring we had the necessary three out of six items inside the vehicle. The young guy was great. He was, I think he was more awestruck than diligent when he did the tour and, and within the hour we had our new insurance and license plates. Was it worth it? Sure. <laughs> Our ambulance is happy to be officially an RV and not the beast it was as an ambulance. The monthly insurance went down a bit, but, but now we're relieved that if we had a major accident, it'd be covered for considerably more than just a plain old Ford van. 
So there are some considerations to ponder. We aren't living in the ambulance full time yet. And where we live in Vancouver, the cost of insurance is higher than a, a rural area and our insurance is government mandated. Prices and coverage will vary across Canada and the U.S. And apparently in the U.S., just getting insurance for an ambulance is tough unless your agent can see it as a simple heavy-duty van. I guess in the U.S. It, it, it's more difficult because uh, buyers end up with the ambulance still with its emergency decals, lights, and paint job. Well, in Canada, all that has to be removed before decommissioning it. So you really need to do your due diligence, and there are a few more things you must consider. Well, while you'd probably want replacement costs for all the work you put into it, it doesn't work out that way. Not unless you have a, a new vehicle, one owner, less than five years old, RV, actually made as an RV, and sold as an RV vehicle. So what can you do? Well, you can do what we did, insure it at an agreed-upon value. In our case, we told our agent it was worth 90000 and they signed off on it. It's not like you can go to the NADA or Kelly Auto Guide for a replacement cost. But we're covered. You should look at what policies cover it too. Check out the camper versus full-time RV coverage. It'll be different. Check out camper liability. Roadside assistance and towing is a big one. Remember the $500 towing quote. Does your insurance cover personal items in your RV? Cameras and stuff are, are covered under our home insurance. Better check that out. How about pet insurance? That could be a hard pill to swallow if you have an emergency on the road. Speaking of emergency expenses, does your policy include hotels if you break down somewhere? I'm sure I didn't cover everything, and remember, this is for the weekend warrior, the camper, not for a liveaboard full-timer. I'd love to hear from, from some of you full-timers and the rest of you how you manage insurance coverage. And, and as usual, uh, I hope you like what, what I've given you. I've done some research on this, and uh, give us a like and please subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.